here's a circuit where the EMF they say is 18 volts. Z has 5 volts. Let's just write that as 5 volts. That's its potential difference. And the resistance here is 18. Same down here, they say. In part A, we're asked to find the potential difference across V, uh, sorry, across resistor X. Before I write that down, let me go ahead and indicate what else I know. The potential difference across Y has to be 5 volts. And the reason is because this guy is in parallel with this guy. So their potential difference would have to be the same. Okay, how about x? To answer that, let's draw a closed loop. I chose to go through the bottom resistor, but you could have gone through y, that'd be fine too. The total EMF is 18 volts. That 18 volts has to be lost somewhere in that loop. The only two places to lose the EMF are across x and across z. So when we add the potential difference of x with the potential difference of z, it must total to the 18 volts given by the cell or battery. We know the value of vz, it's 5. So solving for vx is pretty straightforward. And it comes to 13. On to number 11. We're given the EMF. We know the resistances. I'll call this R1 and R2. And first we have to find the current leaving the cell. That represents the total current in the entire circuit. Because when it leaves the cell, that's the very beginning. From there, it could split across different paths. It could do a lot of fancy things. But when it joins back up at the cell, it has to all be together again. So it's the total. So we have to find that total current. We'll use the equation V equals IR applied to the entire circuit. We know the total potential difference because it's uh, exactly equal to the EMF. We're looking for the current. And the total resistance is found by adding those series resistances. When we divide, what do we get? 5.5 and, and 7.5 and makes 13. 1.23. Part B, find the potential difference across each resistor, V1 and V2. Now, we know the current, so we could use I times R. After all, I times R. After all, if 1.23 amps exits this battery, it will all go through the first resistor, it will all go through the second resistor. So it's the same current value for the entire problem. But instead of using V equals IR, we could instead use the potential divider equation. V1 consumes some fraction of the EMF. What's the fraction? It's simply the relative resistance. The EMF, that's 16 volts. And the relative resistance is 5.5 over the total, which is 13. But I'll write that as 5.5 plus 7.5. And, and when we work this out, what do we get? We do 5.5 over 13 times 16. At 6.8, we'll call it, for two sig figs. We do the same thing down here. V2 consumes some fraction of the EMF. What fraction? 
Well, it consumes its the fraction is equal to the relative resistance. So it contributes 7.5 ohms out of a total of 13. So we multiply that by the EMF, and what do we get? Let's do 7.5 over 13 times 16, 9.2. As a nice check, if you add these values together, they should total to 16, and in fact, they do. Okay, on to number 12. We know that the EMF is 5. Let me do a better epsilon. Uh, the resistance of Z, that's supposed to be Z right there, is 2 ohms. So Z is 2 ohms, and the resistance of Y is 4. Find the potential difference across Y. Let me try that again. Find the potential difference across Z. Find the current exiting the cell, the total, before it splits up. Then find the current that goes through Y, and also the current that goes through Z. Okay, first, the potential difference. That's pretty straightforward because these resistors are in parallel with the cell. So already we know the answer is going to be 5 volts, right? Same for Z. But for the sake of thoroughness, let's go ahead and draw a closed loop through that top resistor. On that loop, we gain 5 volts of EMF. So we have to lose exactly the same amount for energy to be conserved. Where are we losing the 5 volts? Across resistor Y. And so that's how we know that Vy is 5 volts. We could draw a loop for this, and we get the exact same result for resistor Z. Now to find the current. If we take the equation I times R, we could rearrange. And for current, what we get is I equals V over R. Let's apply that to resistor Y, and then we'll apply it to resistor Z. Whoops. We know the potential difference across Y, that's 5. We know the resistance of Y, that's 4. Dividing, we get 1.25 amps or amperes is the unit of current. We do the same thing down below. Z is in parallel with Y, so they have the same exact potential difference, 5 volts. But Z has less resistance, only 2 ohms. When we divide, we get 2.5. And as a nice check, um, oh, I've skipped part, what is it, part C, the current exiting the cell. Whoops. Well, um, you could solve for y and z first, and then you could just realize that they have to, you know, before they split, they are the total. They add together to give us the total. And that total current is what exits the cell. It's Then it splits up after exiting, and then it joins back together here, and it goes back to the cell. So the total is simply the sum. It is I total is IY plus IZ, which is 1.25 plus 2.5. Whoa, 2.5. And that, of course, gives us 3.75 amperes. So that's a nice kind of easy way to find the total. However, there's a good way to check it, right? We want to be thorough. The other way you could find the total current is by using the equation V equals IR. We know the total potential difference. That's the EMF, 5 volts. We seek the total current before it splits up. And because we have two parallel resistors, we have to use, whoops, 
we have to use our trick where we add the reciprocals. And if you solve for the total resistance here, you're going to get 4 thirds ohms or 1.3 repeating. And when you divide by 4 thirds, it comes to exactly 3.75. Let me show that. 5 over 4 thirds, 3.75. So that's a nice check. It agrees with what we got here. OK, on to 13. The circuit has an EMF of 18 volts. Each resistor has 4 ohms. Find the current in each branch. So I'll call that first current right here, Ix, which is really the total. Then it splits, some goes through Z, some current takes the other branch through Y. Here they meet back up. The different distances here are really inconsequential, and we'll see why when we learn the real physical picture. Um, and when they meet back up, then they, they recombine to form Ix again. Okay, we know that Ix splits into Z plus Y. What we have to do is redraw this picture. And the first thing I'll do is I'll look and say, okay, here are two parallel branches. You can either, from this junction, you can either take this path through Z, or you can take this path through Y. So together, they make a parallel subcircuit. And if I draw that parallel subcircuit, here's X, as a single resistor, which I'll call, I don't know, Z parallel with Y, What is their collective or total resistance? Well, you could use the equation 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 and then take the inverse of your answer. Or you could remember the trick that whenever you have two parallel branches with the same exact 4 ohms or 2 ohms or whatever it is, the total is half of the individual branch. So this is 2 ohms. X is still 4. Now what we have is a simple potential divider circuit. The 18 volts gets divided across this resistor and that resistor. Well, pretty straightforward. We could say that, uh, let's see, we could say there's a couple ways to proceed. Um, let's find the potential difference across each of these guys. The 4 ohm contributes 4 x contributes 4 ohms out of a total of 4 plus 2, right? And so that's the fraction of the EMF that it consumes. So that's going to be 4 sixths. We'll go ahead and type it in the calculator. But that's 2 thirds of 18, which is 12. And so z parallel with y is going to contribute 2 out of a total of 6. That's 1 third. Whoops. A third of 18 is 6. That means that Z has a potential difference of 6, and Y has a potential difference of 6. OK. How do we find the current values? Well. Let me move this up, and I'm going to take this away for now. The currents can be acquired using V equals IR, because now, and if we rearrange, we get V over R. To find the current through, let's start with Z, why not? We just need the potential difference of Z over the resistance of Z. And now we know Z's potential difference. It's 6. And its resistance is, what was it? 4. They're all 4. That's right. Oh. Here we go. 
When we divide, we get 3 over 2, 1.5 amps. We do the exact same thing with y. It turns out to be the exact same calculation, 6 over 4, 1.5. We finally, one more time, we do the same calculation for x. Its potential difference, v, is uh, what we get? We got 12 volts right there. The resistance was 4 for every single one. 12 over 4, that gives us 3 amps. And we are finished. A nice check is to say, well, You've got 1.5 amps here, 1.5 amps on the other branch, the other parallel path. So when they combine together again, we add 1.5 plus 1.5 to get 3, which is exactly what we calculated separately below. So that's a nice check.